Arsenal on Sunday undoubtedly showed everyone why they are one of the best teams in the country. With a phenomenal 3-1 win and domination against title rivals Liverpool, there was lots of players that really performed. But in a rare instance for once, I think stats don't show the whole story and there was players that played phenomenally despite not having the overall best stats in the game. And a player including that is Kai Havertz who I thought was insane for Arsenal, one of his best performances for the club in a very long time. So let's have a deep dive into his performance and just how good he actually was. Now if you did not watch the game against Arsenal and Liverpool and had a little gander at the stats, you would think Havertz weren't really very good. Yet again, he didn't score and missed key chances. But not only that, seemed to lose a lot of duels to Konate in the overall game. And I think this is a great example of why stats don't show the whole story and why you should always look for your eyes and make your own judgment on players. And I think Kai Havertz really showed that in this game because I genuinely think he was phenomenal. In this game, he had an overall 24 duels across it and only won six of them and lost 18. But that amount of duels in a game is insane. He was conducting himself in a way so he could get into these duels and have big aggressive fights with the defenders. He was not making it easy for them and he was pressing them very hard trying to win the ball back. I also think the stats like duels lost is not necessarily accurate. Sometimes you will see he won the ball back from a tackle and someone like Jorginho will come and help him even though Havertz hasn't fully got the ball, maybe losing the draw in that sense. And overall it doesn't really matter when Arsenal win the ball back from his pressing so it doesn't really matter he lost that duel. Now of course Havertz could definitely improve his finishing and end product for the team. Because he missed that one-on-one -on -one, we got lucky this time the rebound went in and I'm not saying that's necessarily a good thing but he is vital to the way that Arsenal build up and attack right now. Because Havertz has been played as a midfielder a lot this season I think Arteta used that in this game to help him use that midfield skills. He very much came back into midfield to help us. I mean, we even see it with the first goal with the build-up play. He comes back, does a little one-two pass with the defenders to get us out on that left side where he then makes the run through the middle. And often, even though people are saying Kanate had a good game, Kanate really struggled to follow Mutt Havertz for most of the games. It seemed like he had been tasked with doing that. And Havertz constantly kept putting him in positions he didn't want to be in, up the wings, in defence, in the midfield. And Kanate was getting stretched around the whole game. And the most important thing about him is he makes the players around him incredibly much better. I don't think we have that great finishing with Jesus anyway, and I don't think people around him are really doing that well. He gets in the right positions in the box, but because Havertz Havertz is more of a deeper player, he's played more deeper than up front in most of his career. He's used to doing interchange of passes in midfield, even coming deeper to win the tackles and win the ball. He has no problem seeing in that box midfield and pressing with the team and helping Jorginho and Rice in that midfield to get the ball up the pitch. And he'll often sit back and go back to defend if it means that people like Martinelli and Saka get a lot of space out on the width or get a 1v1. And the key thing for Arsenal in this game was how good they were out of possession. They really did well with their box midfield. So they had Odegaard and Havertz be the two press is going forward trying to block all the passing lane while Jorginho and Rice would sort of cover behind them in the close box midfield just to make sure any players who could get through would be tackled or could get down to in that area and because often these four without possession liked playing together very close with each other and let everyone help each other there was many times where Havertz would initiate the press and go and get the tackle in and maybe he might not fully get it done but he's at least slipping up Canate or McAllister and then Jorginho will come in and sweep up the ball and it also meant when Havertz and Odegaard were taking turns into pressing in different positions they also had Rice helping them out wide when the ball went out to the right strength you got Saka and Rice pressing it so they can win the ball back Havertz was very good at marshalling this and making sure we initiated the attack and even if a player maybe did get past him like for instance McAllister got past him at one moment he was very alert at getting back and doing a great sliding tackle to win the ball back and he did this a lot he was everywhere in that midfield and defence I was really impressed you could actually see fully why Arteta wanted to sign him and I think he never really was supposed to solidify that left centre mid role because of a lot of injuries between Timber and Party. I think he definitely was supposed to be an option up front because he can really well play that. I know he's not the best finisher, but the fact he's so aggressive as well really helps us. Of course, Jesus is a very aggressive player. He can do very well to win the ball back, but sometimes his stature just lets him down. Havertz has that massive stature to give problems to the defenders. And off the ball, I've said this since he signed, I think he's excellent. I think he really understands where to go now and where to be off the ball, marshalling the players around. And I was so impressed by his pressing the capabilities in the team. There was also moments later on in the second half where Liverpool attacking and Havertz would be sitting there in right back in centre back trying to defend with the team getting his head on the ball because that's what we need him and he's very good in the air and a lot of the times because we had a box midfield he was very good at picking the ball up and running with it and I know he's not the best on the ball but when Rice won the ball back and Jorginho won the ball back he's very good at helping them if they would delay the time and there's no doubt about it Kanai did struggle with him he might have won most of the duels but he was definitely causing him a lot of problems in defence because they just simply didn't know where Havertz was going to go he kept moving around the pitch everywhere and he was picking the ball up in pockets and running with it 
bit passing off to players and getting help with others that they didn't really want to leave Martinelli and Saka exposed so they had to sort of close down Havertz in a lot of situations and in the end in the game Havertz made four people in Liverpool's team get yellow cards because of his brilliant positioning and winning fouls when we needed it to he's such a good option in the air or on the counter or even just trying to sustain possession or get the ball over the midfield when Ryan did his really good long kicks that go over the midfield Havertz is one always aiming for obviously because of his height but just because he's causing a nuisance this actually ended up causing Kanata to get his first yellow card because he pulls Havertz down and Havertz gets a really good free kick in a really good position when Arsenal didn't even necessarily have the ball sustained this keeps us the ball keeps us more pressure with the time and that was later on in the game and that lasted because when Liverpool attacking later on in the game Havertz picks it up from midfield on the break and he's not afraid to run at people anymore he's no longer passing it back and doing the easy option he has a bit more confidence he does a brilliant touch and tries to go around Kanati and Kanati puts two hands up and brings him down two yellow cards that Kanati had got just from causing him to be a mess and that was a red card that we really needed in that moment which really helped us win the game and I know it's hard to justify someone playing well when they're up front and they haven't got a goal and assist but because this is the new way of thinking you have to think this way this is why Havertz is in the team I don't think he was really in the team to score when we picked him up maybe to give us an option in the air going forward later on in games but I don't think Arteta really thought someone who's never performed up to their xg would get loads of goals and Havertz was right when he made that statement saying that people only look at goals and assists to decide if someone's played bad and I think that's fairly I think he played really well in this game and now I think Havertz has played like this most of the season I do think he's really good but I think he definitely excels a lot more in that number nine position I've seen a lot of people say he's not been that good and he's not a world-class number nine but he's not a world-class number nine but I don't think he's in the team to really play as a number nine if anything he plays a hybrid midfield attack role where we can get our wingers to be the furthest players up the pitch get Martinelli sack and more assists and goals and in a sense Martinelli's our best finisher in the team so you would probably want that and I think that makes sense and even if he gets no goals and assists for like loads of games it honestly doesn't really matter because the team is definitely better under him it gets people on the ball a lot more and I think with the combination of Zinchenko and Jorginho very good passes in there very good on the ball players it doesn't necessarily matter that he's not good on the ball because he's so good out of possession and he always helps Arsenal sustain a high attack if it's him being in behind with his height from his physicality or it's for him coming deep and helping the midfield get another man in there so he can push the ball up because he also makes the run to go forward there and after it and it's sometimes not even his fault he won the ball against Liverpool very high up the pitch a few times and we didn't take them chances and I know you can say the same about him not taking his chances but sometimes there's things you can't necessarily control and I've never said Hammers is the best player in the world we did spend a lot of money on him but when he's used to a very good effect like this he is a very effective player I think in this game he was very effective and I don't think he should start every single game especially up front and you would obviously hope we get like a world-class finisher in the team but that's not really how Arsenal work we like playing different teams you like playing different systems in a lot of games and sometimes you have to against the top level teams when we play in Europe and we play in other game opponents we're gonna have to use something like this and I think this would work brilliant to just press teams in and against Liverpool have been one of the best teams in the country they haven't lost in 17 Premier League games it really worked and I think it was the best option on the day let me know what you guys think of how it's performance and let me know what you think Arsenal can do this season were you impressed with the performance of Havertz or do you think it's getting overrated I appreciate you viewing your video and thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video I would recommend watching my video about Trossard yesterday about his brilliant performance off the bench this season and subscribe for any more Arsenal and football content thank you for watching